In the last couple of lectures, I've been working my way through this example involving a series of one-dimensional elastic collisions. In the first two portions of that problem, we looked at situations involving objects of equal mass, and as we discovered in the course of doing those problems, when those types of objects collide elastically in one dimension, they just exchange velocities. However, in the last portion of this problem, the third part, let's now go ahead and see what happens if the objects are of unequal mass. If the objects are of unequal mass, then basically you have no choice but to just set up your expressions, conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy, and then just run through the algebra. As you do, you want to make the process as easy on yourself as possible. So let's go ahead and take a look at this third and last example. We have the first object has a mass of one kilogram and it's initially moving at a speed of three meters per second. It then overtakes the second object of mass two kilograms, which is initially moving in the same direction at one meter per second. Find the final velocity of each object. Okay, so then therefore a situation looks like this. So here's our first object of mass M1, which is given to us as one kilogram. This object then is initially moving to the right-hand side at three meters per second. It's gonna overtake and collide elastically here with M2. Okay, M2 has a mass of two kilograms, initially moving to the right-hand side with a V2 naught of one meter per second. So then therefore, object number one overtakes and collides elastically with object number two. Okay, when they bounce off of each other, we don't know, for example, if M1 is gonna rebound or keep going in its original direction of motion. So then therefore, let me just go ahead and draw this. Here's a V1 final. And then the second object, M2, is gonna have a V2 final like so. Okay, now we just set up the first of our two equations and two unknowns, we set up conservation of momentum. So change of momentum of number one plus change of momentum of number two is equal to zero. And we just start filling in our terms. So the final momentum of number one after the collision is M1 V1 final and then minus the initial of m1 v1 naught. Okay, then object number two, after the collision, final momentum is m2 v2 final, and then minus the initial m2 v2 naught is equal to zero, and nothing here cancels out, nothing is equal to zero. So then therefore, immediately start plugging in your numbers. Just be careful of negative signs as we go. So then when I start plugging in the given quantities, here's then what I obtain. First of all, I'm going to have here 1 times V1 final, and then minus 1 times 3, so minus 3, and then plus 2 times V2 final, and then minus 2 times 1 for a total of minus 2, like so. Okay, minus 3 minus 2 is a total of minus 5, and then therefore the first of my two equations and two unknowns is going to be the following. Okay, and then we get our second equation, which is the elastic approximation. Remember that we're assuming that the heat loss is negligible in an elastic collision, so then therefore the kinetic energy is conserved. So we set up our conservation of kinetic energy expression, delta K1 plus delta K2 is equal to zero, and then we just start filling in our terms. Recall, however, for my first couple of problems involving the elastic collision, that the one half from one half mv squared always cancels out in the elastic collision. So then therefore, with a little bit of experience, quite frankly, don't even bother writing it down because it's gonna cancel out anyway. So then therefore, that's what I'm gonna do here. Instead of writing the kinetic energies as one half mv squared, I'll just write them as mv squared and the one halves will already have been canceled. So then therefore, for the change in kinetic energy of object number one, Final kinetic energy after the collision is M1 V1 final squared, and then minus the initial prior to the collision, M1 V1 naught squared. And then for object number two, final kinetic energy after the collision, M2 V2 final squared, and then minus the initial of M2 V2 naught squared. Once again, I've already canceled out the one half from this expression. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in our numbers, just being careful here as we go. All right, so then doing so, I have here, first of all, one times V1 final squared, and then minus one times three squared for a total of minus nine, then plus two V2 final squared, and then minus two times one squared for a total of minus two, like so. Minus nine minus two is a total of minus 11, and then therefore the second of my two equations and two unknowns is as follows. Like so. And then when you get to this step here, then you basically have to do the following. 
take the top expression and solve it first of all for V1 final and then plug into here. When I do, I'll end up with a quadratic for V2 final as the unknown. Now, if I want to, I could solve for V2 final instead, but then I would have to deal with fractions if I did so. And frankly, I don't want to do that. I want to make the process as easy on myself algebraically as possible. All right, so let me go ahead and erase the things that I don't need. I don't need any of this stuff anymore. So let's get rid of all of this. And now let's do the math. So I'm going to take the momentum expression here and solve it for V1 final. So move these two guys to the other side. Just be careful with negative signs once again as we do, like so. And then I'll take that expression for V1 final, and then I'll plug it into here. And yes, I do have to square it. So I'm going to have now V2, or V1 final rather, multiplied by itself, like so. And then the other two terms, so plus 2v2 final squared, and then minus 11 is equal to 0, like so. Okay? Okay, let me go ahead and erase this. I no longer need this quantity. Okay, let's go ahead and do this foiling process. So this multiplied by this is, first of all, 4v2 final squared. And just be careful of negative signs. Negative 2 times v2 final times 5 is negative 10. And then there's another negative 10, so negative 20 v2 final, and then plus 25, and then these two additional terms, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify here. 4 plus 2 is a total of 6 v2 final squared. There we go. And then minus 20 v2 final still. And then for the constants, 25 minus 11 is plus 14. One more step here before we start factoring. I can cancel out a 2 from each coefficient. And then when I do, I arrive at this step here. Like so. And then when you get to this step, most of the time you'll end up with something that's factorable in simple problems such as this where all of the quantities are integers. Sometimes you'll end up with something that has to be solved by using the quadratic formula. So be it. But for the most part, with simple problems such as this, you can factor. Okay, now when it comes to the factoring, here's how you can help yourself, even though this is a fairly easy expression to factor. You can help yourself by remembering ahead of time what one of the answers for V2 final has to be. It has to be the no collision solution. In other words, it has to be the same thing as V2 naught. So if we go back up to the top board for just a moment, one of the answers for V2 final has to be V2 naught, which is one meter per second. So then therefore, when it comes to the factory, I already know ahead of time that one of my factors has to be this. Like so, because this right here will give me the no collision solution. Therefore, knowing that ahead of time, the other factor is easy to describe. Obviously, in this case, it's just the following. Like so, oops, minus, here we go. And now when it comes to the factory here, let's go ahead and check ourselves. So this times this is that. This times this is negative 7v2 final minus 3v2 final for a total of negative 10. And then negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7, so it works. We did the algebra correctly. And then right here, this is the no collision solution. Okay, now that we have seen the no collision solution, we could ignore it from that point forward. And now let's go through the remainder of the problem. So the remainder of the problem is to take this factor here now and set it equal to zero. Like so, and then solve for V2 final. So move the seven to the other side and then divide by three. And then therefore V2 final is seven thirds meters per second. Seven thirds is the same thing as two and a third. So that's 2.33 meters per second. Like so. And you notice that the answer here is not an integer quantity. It doesn't have to be. In this particular case, the final velocity of the second object is positive 2.33 meters per second to the right-hand side. Okay, now that I have that answer for V2 final, let's jump back here and find V1 final. So V1 final is going to be negative 2 times 7 thirds for V2 final, and then plus 5. So this right here is negative 14 thirds. And then in terms of thirds, 5 is the same thing as 15 thirds, like so. Okay, add them up and you get positive 1 third. So then 
therefore V1 final is one third meter per second, same thing as 0.33 meters per second. So right here is the solution like so. Notice that V1 final does in fact continue in its original direction of motion, albeit at a much lower speed than what it had. Okay, now let me go ahead and simulate this collision here with my carts at the desk like so. Okay, so here's M1. This guy here will initially be moving in that direction at three meters per second. Here's M2, which is twice as massive as M1, and initially it's gonna be moving in that direction at one meter per second. And then they collide elastically. This guy here basically slows down and continues in its original direction of motion. This guy here will speed up in its original direction of motion. So then therefore the situation looks like this. Like so. And that's exactly what we described here in the solution to this problem. Okay, so that concludes the one-dimensional elastic collision.